I'm Matthew Kay. We're here at Brickworld Chicago 2016. I'm here with Dave Coletta, and we're going to take a look at the Virtual Log Putt Putt Collaborative uh, Layout. So, Dave, uh, what exactly is this before we get started? So, this is the seventh uh, Brickworld collaboration of Virtual Log, and the concept was that each builder would get to experience something that they're passionate about, and we would put it together into a giant Mini Land Plus Putt Putt course. Uh, so, we're starting with the entryway. And from there, we're coming in to Virtualug and we're experiencing the passions of each builder. So we have Tyler Hallowell who built a wonderful Chthulhu here and you can see that he added some power functions in there. Tyler is a great creature builder so it's wonderful to have his creature contribution. We follow the pavers along the path here to Chris Phipson's hole which is Star Wars themed from the original trilogy. We've got the Death Star, we've got Hoth, and we've got Tatooine. And, and thank you so much for shouting out the builders. So that that's awesome. So we can keep, keep track of who did what. But I just want to point out too that this is uh, your contribution, Dave. Right? This at the very beginning is my contribution. Uh, the gate, which is just an entryway, welcoming you to what we are. We're virtual lug. We're pod pod. This is who we are. We uh, we like to show people what what we can do. So. And like one of the best things about the virtual log collaborations uh, throughout the years, in my opinion, are like the, the mechanical elements and components. So, uh, what, how did you? What, what, what kind of gearing mechanism? Like, so what could you say that would kind of give someone an idea of how you did that? So this is a concept that uh, Matt Roundtree and I came up with together. Uh, he's one of our members. He's much more of a tech head than I am, and we used a worm drive. And I actually tested this out first on an infant quieting device that I made for my son, uh, and. I took that concept and carried it over here so that uh, we could see uh, just an, a new way of entering into one of our, it's, it's really one of the first virtual leg builds that has an introduction that's just shouting out, this is, this is who we are. I like it, I like it. And then moving on down here, what else are we going to take a so look we're at? following the pavers along, we have uh, Simon Liu's classic space slash Mythbusters hole. Uh, you know, Simon is very passionate about classic space. And we're following along the pavers into Connor, Connor Lill's hole, which is a mech factory, um, which is being invaded by the indigenous people of the planet or the indigenous creatures of the planet. And I believe that this character here is from Fallout. She's uh, one of the pinup girls that's on the Nuke Cola. Uh, advertisements in the game. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I love the uh, the custom little decal there. Uh, Connor did a great job on really carrying his theme through the entire hole. Definitely. Now, when you're sitting down and uh, kind of conceptualizing a layout like this, um, is there like drawing that takes place? Is there like lots of uh, banter? How, how do you guys sort of hash out what you're going to do, how you're going to do it? In like the, the early past, stages? There has been a lot of work early stages. This one we tried to make it as hands off as possible. So basically we thought, we conceived of this as a Tetris game. That everybody would build on regular 32 by 32 base plates and then when we got to the convention we would see how they fit together. Which seems very challenging, but it actually worked out perfectly. Pretty cool. And then I guess like one of the variable elements are these like like kind of uh, stepping stones so almost. We put a couple things in for consistency. We had a couple standards that we talked about. Um, the flags show consistency. The the T boxes show consistency. Each uh, hole has a little placard talking a little bit about it, possibly with the title, possibly without. Um, and the scale of the figures is consistent, and then the pavers help show the path. So those are the kind of little touches along the way that help create consistency along and between the builds. That is awesome, awesome. And then coming on down here? So moving next, we have Alice Lieber Cook's contribution, which is a brave theme hole. And we have some famous archers. We have Merida. We have Katniss Everdeen in the back. We have the Green Arrow. And in the front, we have Hawkeye. And in the back, Daredevil, just for fun. So they're teeing off, aiming for the bullseye. Very cool. And a Miniland scale figures, right? Miniland Plus. So technically not Miniland. Oh. Although if you do see some Miniland, we're going to say that those are kids. Ah, uh, see, I like it. I like it. So it's like an extended sort of figure. This is a, a style that I really appreciate and I thought would translate well to a convention because I sometimes feel like minifigures get lost on a convention floor. 
and I feel like people would be able to recognize some of the characters more easily and appreciate the effort that went into brick building these characters. Definitely, Which you definitely. You can truly see how passionate some people were about exploring this medium. Yeah, and it's very exciting because you typically see Miniland scale figures, Miniland ish, Miniland plus scale figures, only in the context of like a, a mini con layout or something right. like this. So to see it integrated into a collaborative, very, very cool. And I think it was very challenging. It was very challenging for a lot of builders because they are not used to building at this scale. And it's, it's very different for some people. But what's nice is that there's so many different scales in this build. The figures are Miniland Plus, but you have sculpture in here, you have minifigure, you have micro scale, you have a little bit of everything in this layout. Sort of touch a lot of different things. So everybody gets to explore their passions. Very nice, very nice. And then coming on down? So we have Roy Cook contribution which is a kiss themed hole and we have Gene Simmons and his tongue as the fairway and we have all the members of kiss Ace Freely, Peter Chris, Paul Stanley and uh, Gene Simmons himself. Yeah. So a wonderful contribution there. That's very nice. And, and husband and wife team there? Husband and wife team working together. Awesome. Uh, and then coming on down? Uh, next we have Brian Bonahum's contribution, which is in the back here. Uh, he actually didn't tell me what he was doing, so I just gave his whole a title. I called it Brian's Song, a little pun there for those in the Chicago area. Uh, and he took that and ran with it and made a graveyard, and then he said, I need some figures for it. And what have I been doing while I've been building? Listening to Hamilton nonstop. So we've got Alexander Hamilton <laughs> and Aaron Burr, and uh, I don't think they're going to throw away their shot. <laughs> That's very cool. That's very cool. And then coming on down, I see some minifigures. Yes, this is Dennis Price's contribution, which is Scooby-Doo themed. Dennis is a huge Scooby-Doo fan, and he has hidden references to almost every episode of the first two seasons of Scooby-Doo in this build. <laughs> and he has not only the minifigures, but he has some wonderful brick-built figures of Fred and Shaggy and Scooby and Velma and Daphne. Very cool, very cool. And uh, this is a thought that I just had, but I'm sure we'll be posting a video of uh, a large uh, Duplo putt-putt course. This is also kind of putt-putt themed. Is, is there some kind of putt-putt thing going on at Brickworld this year? I think so. I've seen a couple of things that must be just in the zeitgeist right now. So we could have a putt-putt theme for Brickworld next year and people oh. would show up. Is that, is that a thing? Is that? Uh, I, I think it would be great. Uh, moving on down. So next we have my contribution again, which is a kind of an ode to music, but we have two icons, Prince and David Bowie, uh, teeing off and finishing the hole on the record player. And it's just, you know, I just love listening to music while I build and exploring a theme, and my wife and I work together on this hole. That's awesome, that's awesome. I love the, the curvature, is uh, absolutely amazing. It was just trying to think about how music makes you feel while you're building, and uh, I, I, I love listening to records, so it was awesome. uh, a nice way to finish that off. So is that like, uh, I personally, I find like uh, slow jazz for some reason seems to be great building or just, just you know, like building, sorting music. So your favorite uh, genre of music would be? Everything. 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 You can see, you know, I talked about Hamilton, Prince, David Bowie, just a little bit of everything. I find uh, there's something about like the right side of the brain versus the left side of the brain. It's like you can't listen to music with words in it and write like uh, type an essay. You know, That's do you set a thing? I don't think it works with uh, with building, though. It's like a, anything's game. Anything's good. All right, moving on down, moving on down. Actually, we're going to the back now, and we have a, a collaboration within a collaboration. So in the back, we have a Smurf-themed hole going back to Lee Jones's Smurf Village. And Lee and Simon, Lou, and Adam Reed Tucker work together on that hole. And uh, from there, we're coming over to a beach-themed hole that was done by me and Tyler Hallowell and Matt Roundtree uh, and we thought a good mini golf course needs a castle. We did a little different kind of castle so it's a sand castle. That's awesome. I love the beach towels. Thank you. This is a, a kind of an ode to my autobiographical series that I've been working on. So we add that in there. That's awesome, awesome. And then uh, what are we looking at here? So this is uh, Heath Floor and Matt Roundtree who worked together on this one. And Heath is very passionate about Irish culture in Ireland. And he built a pub. And he has some wonderful brick-built figures by Matt Roundtree on the course who have really enjoyed their time at the pub. <laughs> See, a gentleman seems to be enjoying uh, spreading out a little bit there. Uh, he, he might be making uh, grass angels. Uh, oh, look, and, and then another individual seems to have uh, 
had a lot of fun at the uh, the pub. He's eyeing his approach very carefully interesting, into interesting. the into the course. And I guess moving along, what do we want to take a look at so, next? I would like to point out Kyle Peterson's uh, Happy Gilmore themed hole. We have Happy and Chubbs, and even we have Chubbs's Gator. And uh, if you remember the movie, you're gonna die, clown. <laughs> A very difficult hole. And more people should uh, Adam Sandler movies just kind of shots out. Nice to put a little reference in there for him. Very cool, very cool. And then coming on right, down. Now we have uh, actually five holes by the same builder. So we have Bart Lero who did uh, a kind of ode to Virtue Lug and the Four Seasons. So we have the letters spelled out for V Lug. And we have winter, fall, summer, and spring. And that leads us into his the 18th hole, the most challenging, uh, The Wrath of Val, which is a original series Star Trek reference to the ap episode The Apple. Uh, and you see Kirk and Uhuru and Spock and Bones, and we even have a red shirt in the background who doesn't seem to have done so well on the course. No. Uh, I like in the back, it looks like a green sludge, but then you realize, oh, it's a hole. That's the course. That's awesome. And you finish off after you have a great round of 18. What do you do? Uh, get a drink. You get a drink at the bar, at the tiki bar. And you have the indigenous people of Gamma Triangula 6 sitting there at the bar serving our patrons. That's awesome. Dave, thank you so much for sharing. Very, very talented group of builders. Uh, I really look forward to see what you guys come up with next year. This is absolutely amazing. Well, thank you very much, Matt. Thank you.